Para po sa mga sports enthusiast, papalapit na po ang 32nd Southeast Asian Games o SEA Games na gaganapin po sa Cambodia. Kaya naman ngayong umaga, ay eh, makakapanayan po natin ang isa sa mga representative ng ating bansa sa larangan ng swimming. Hindi po nakakalam ang SEA Games ay isang multi-sport event na nilalahokan ng mga bansa na miyembro ng Southeast Asian Games Federation kasama na ang Pilipinas. Ngayong umaga, kasama po natin si Jared Hatch, siyang representative po ng Pilipinas sa larangan ng swimming para bigyan pa tayo ng idea tungkol sa kanyang partisipasyon at ang kanya pong paghahanda para sa sports competition na ito. Si Jared ay marami ng naiset na record sa swimming at patuloy pa ang kanyang pamumayagpag sa nasabing larangan. Kaya naman, let's all welcome Jared Hatch. Good morning. Good morning, Jared. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, Thank you for waking up early for us. Exactly. <laughs> and for sacrificing Boracay, I believe, yeah. right? Because you're supposed to be there today. Well, okay. Let's start by talking about your swimming journey. How did your career start as a swimmer? Were you originally athletic? Yes. Um, I actually did uh, three sports at the same time. Mm -hmm. I did uh, basketball, baseball, and karate. Actually, four sports. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember my coaches always get mad at me. They always wanted me to keep swimming because in swimming, you can't really practice once or twice a week, you have to do it every single day. Mm -hmm. And I would always go to basketball practice, baseball, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when I was 12, I got last in my heat. And I was, I was so used to winning all the time. Mm -hmm. And I got last in my heat and then I dropped everything. Um, and I decided to keep swimming. And actually my first ever swim experience, um, I had to do a tryout for my swim team mm -hmm. and I had an asthma attack. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so my mom forced me to, to do the tryout because I didn't want to swim. And so I got out, I was so mad at her. I was like 10 years old, like, oh yeah, I hate you. You tried to kill me, mom. <laughs> um, and so I d didn't want to do it again, but then she bribed me with some video games or something. So I kept doing it and now I'm here with you guys. Thanks wow. to that video game. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, swimming is also good for asthma. I yes, exactly. Right? exactly. Okay. So you are half American, half Filipino. Why did you choose to represent Philippines? Um, I think that it means a lot more over here in the Philippines. I, I have more, I also have more accessibility to compete um, and I get to give back as much as I want. I was like in the US they have so many resources um, and here I'm able to do clinics with grassroots swimmers. I, I visited the Vow on, on Tuesday and I was able to talk to some of the kids about my journey, about my mental health journey because I retired in 2021 because of my mental health because I was so unhappy in the sport you know you do it for so long and mm -hmm. I just never really took care of myself appropriately so when I on Tuesday I talked to the kids saying hey no matter what kind of success or failures you have you have to make sure that you're good as an individual because once you're done with the sport you don't you don't have any anything to feel accomplished and that's exactly how I felt and after my talk uh, when I was about to leave one of the kids pulled me aside he was about 15 years old mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I want to let you know that you really inspired me. I've been thinking about quitting. And, you know, I woke up at 3 a.m. for that after a four-day competition, so I was really tired. And at that moment, like, I, I knew it was worth it. And, like, that, this is why this is why I decided to compete for the Philippines. This is, a, this is why I decided to do clinics. This is why I got up so early. And it just really, when it comes full circle like that, it, it's, really, it's a really rewarding feeling. Yeah, the, well, discipline is a factor. And uh, let's talk about your achievements. What uh, records do you currently hold right now in swimming? Um, I hold the 4x1 freestyle relay with um, some of my teammates, uh, John Pierre Cruzam, Sacho Illustre, and Luke Gebby. That was in 2019 SEA Games. I also hold the 50 meter butterfly, which I just got last Sunday, and the 100 meter butterfly, which I got in 2021. Wow, congratulations, yeah, congratulations for that. Yeah, and having such an outstanding record, I'm sure you're, you know, there are pressures that come along the way. Ha aside from what you said earlier, how do you deal with these pressures? Um, I think there's different kind of pressures you can put on yourself and different pressures that are put onto you. For me personally, the pressures that I put onto myself is a major reason why I stopped swimming in 2021. Um, but I think as long as you care about what you're doing, there's always going to be some type of pressure. But it's a matter of how you let that pressure affect you. Are you going to let it break you down? Or are you going to let it, or are you going to use it to fuel you to be the best that you can be in whatever profession that is? Um, so I think that you're always going to have some type of pressures, and it's a matter of if you let it break you down or how you let it get to you and how you utilize that. So I don't think it'll ever truly go away. 
So let's talk about your participation of coming SEA Games. Of course, representing the Philippines, this will be held in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the journey in order to have this opportunity and how are you preparing for the big event? Um, so my journey, so, I, so once again, I retired in 2021 um, and I started coaching because I, I felt like I wasn't serving a purpose and you know, getting back to the younger generation and sharing what I can with them, that really made me feel like I'm doing something, gave me a reason to wake up every day. And then that sparked my love for the sport again. And in October of last year, um, my Tita Lani, who was president of PSI Swimming, she called me and said, hey, I need you back for uh, Cambodia in May. And uh, I said, you know, it's, I've been thinking about it, so let's do it. And I started training down in Orange County. I'm originally from the Bay Area. So I started training down in Orange County with Mission Viejo Natadors under Coach Jeff Julian. Um, and we have a pro group down there. We have a couple of Team USA national team guys as well. We have someone from Great Britain, an Olympian there too. So we have a good training group going and pushing us forward. And not only does he help us in the pool, but he really, he really touches on the mental health aspect. I can't stress that hard enough. I think that the major reason for my swimming right now, I, when I was swimming for 12 years, I kind of plateaued. I didn't get much faster, but within four months of training, I've been swimming faster than I ever have. And I think that's a really an ode to my mental health and how how much my coach cares about me as a person and how that translates into the pool. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling pretty ready for uh, May in Cambodia. We're excited also yeah. for you. Uh, well, how, how long have you been training and do you expect tough competition in the, uh, in the uh, Sea Games? I've been training since October, so about four months. Um, but yeah, I expect tough competition in Cambodia, but I wouldn't want it any other way. I think that's how you, that's how you really feel accomplished and feel like your hard work is paid off because I have a really good friend actually who's won countless gold medals for Singapore, uh, Zeng Wen Kwa. Um, he was my college teammate over at Berkeley and I'm excited to go against him. I'm excited to give him a run for his money because uh, he knows that I retired for a little bit and I'm excited to not only get up next to him but chase him down in the pool. <laughs> Do you have a Filipino uh, swimmer that you look up to? Uh, Jesse Lacuna, when I first got here, he, uh, he was a 200 butterfly, so he's in the same stroke. And I remember my first SEA Games, I was kind of nervous and, you know, it's my first really big meet. And he really pulled me aside and calmed me down and said, hey, you got this, there's a reason you're here. So I, I really, I really appreciate him and he was definitely my inspiration coming in. Is the Olympics also a goal for you, joining in the Olympics? Yes. Wow. Oh, that's, a, that's been the goal since I was a kid um, and I would love to not only be at the Philippines or be at the Olympics competing for the Philippines, but hopefully even get into a final or a medal. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, that's really exciting. Now, do you have any message for uh, our RSP Barcada? And if you'd like to invite them to watch you, this will be televised eventually, right? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone that really supported me during this. Um, I, in 2019, I had, a, I had a bad last race. I got a really re DQ'd and that really, snowballed into what I was talking about, the whole mental health thing, but through that I've had supporters still make sure that I'm okay, even when I wasn't swimming, whether that's my family, um, people here in the Philippines, um, or my, my friends, my teammates over at Berkeley. So I really appreciate everyone that's had my back through this, and I really hope to prove you right in believing in me through all, through all these years. Well, we it's wish you good luck. We are here to support you. Good luck, you. Kira. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also for sharing your beautiful story to everybody, especially your mental health advocacy. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, ngayon pong umaga, nakapanayin po natin si Jared Hatch, ang isa po sa ating uh, future champion sa swimming. Mm -hmm. And we wish you again good luck on your upcoming competition in the SEA Games. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.